my name uh, given to me by my mother is uh, Susano George, George in English, not, not in Spanish, it's in my birth certificate the way, uh, Ortiz Blanco. I had a lot of association with, with Cesar Chavez and in the early days of his struggle and because I, I could relate very easily to being uh, being a, coming from a farm worker background even though I was born in the city I was raised as a farm worker and I used to pick potatoes and onions and uh, oranges down the Riverside area around Arlington and Casablanca and those areas. Jerry Cox at that time was a Catholic priest, he's a Monsignor and he was basically, it's like because he was uh, the Chancellor of the Diocese of Santa Rosa, a newly formed diocese at that time. And uh, who was it? I think it was Bishop Maher was the, was the, uh, the head right. of, the, of the Catholic Diocese here at that time. Mm -hmm. And Jerry and I connected. I was working up at Healdsburg Nights as a, English as a second language teacher and also citizenship classes. So I'd work at night there. And during the day, I'd be do my social work. Um, Jerry called me up one day at the at the social services department and asked me to have lunch with him. And so I I did, and he took me out to uh, I can't remember the uh, Sizzler over down on on uh, Cotting uh, on uh, Yeah, right across the street from Cotting uh, Cotting Town. And we we hit it off real real early, and and he wanted me to get involved in in uh, helping with uh, organizing the Latino community, more specifically the Mexican community, which was mostly just Mexicans here at that time. Now the the demographics in that regard have changed. Uh, the uh, the long and the short of it is we started the, the United Latins of Sonoma County back in uh, I guess it was '65. Uh, and Los Latinos Unidos del Condado de Sonoma, which was a 501c3 nonprofit. And we started as a, uh, uh, our big program was scholarships. And uh, he was the one that donated uh, $500, the first scholarships we gave. We gave five $100 scholarships to five young uh, Latino kids out of Hillsburg, Sebastopol, Santa Rosa, and let's see where else. I think it was uh, from Geyserville or something. That was our first uh, endeavor. And then he, he, he says, why don't you go down there having a, a, a big conclave, a caucus of Hispanic leaders uh, in Los Angeles. And you know, I was broke. I didn't have any money at the time. And so uh, I says, you know, uh, Monsignor, I can't go down there. I, you know, I, I've got kids and stuff. And you know, it cost me all of thirty-seven dollars round trip to just you know fly down there and back to L.A. And he said, "I'll pay for it." And I said, "Well, if you pay for it, then I'll do it." So we went down, and a guy named Herman Gallegos was leading the the caucus. There was a guy named Ignacio Lopez who had graduated from Stanford. I think he was the only Hispanic at the time that ever graduated from Stanford <laughs> with high honors. And I understand all his papers are. In, 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 in Stanford now. Yeah. He was from Pomona. And just recently at that time, uh, uh, Eduardo uh, Roybal, who had been city councilman and been very active in local politics in Los in Angeles, uh, became a congressman. And he walked into the meeting. And so I, uh, I didn't realize uh, the latent Energy I had, but I really came away from that uh, from that caucus really energized. I was just full of, uh, you know, uh, feelings and and I, all these leaders and all these people just turned me on and turned yeah. Lou on too, and uh, that's when I really started working with Jerry Cox and we really worked uh, organizing the community, and then from there we we started a federal credit union for the United Lands, so it grew. It was uh, one of our little prides. And meanwhile, we we had Mapa. And of course, getting back to Cesar Chavez, he would come in and we would gather around him as United Lands and Mapistas and whoever was there, because it was just it was much more than just UFW then. It was a for us it was a, a way of protest, a way of showing our our social uh, side. Sure. I mean, our our we the, our civil liberties were violated. We thought many times, uh, and uh, so we felt strongly about a union. Uh, the union, and of course, we felt very strongly about our leader. Caesar was a genuine leader for the for the Latino community, especially the Mexican community. 
and uh, and he, uh, he he excelled in that regard and united us in many ways when he went into his fast i remember i went down there to his fast and i just i, I couldn't believe uh, uh i mean it was really very powerful i'm a roman catholic by birth and by choice and when uh, when uh, i was there in the what they used to call the 40 acres uh and he was sat fasting he was really down he's already into 20 some days and very weak and they brought him onto the you know the platform where father day was uh was uh, saying mass and he comes out with this vestment with the black eagle red vestment with the black eagle on it, you know uh -huh. and and we received communion and a, a crumpled up piece of tortilla that was the uh, the host I and mean, he put and give you a little piece of, of tortilla to that was a i mean uh -huh. uh, i have very uh few times had a religious experience that night I had a, a very strong religious experience. It made me very proud of where I came from and who I was. That was the key. I mean, once we started feeling we're as good as anybody and we can do as good as anyone. We're, there's nothing that, that stops us but ourselves. And we need, no, we need not feel inferior in any way, shape, or form. That was uh, the beginning of a very strong uh, I think social movement in the Latino community, especially the Mexicans, who have been around here since day one. Sure. They were here before, yes. you know, uh, the blue eyes came in. So uh, that was, uh, and of course the Native Americans needed us to say we're here even before that. But uh, um, Caesar, uh, I marched with him from Delano to Sacramento, not all the way, but I took buses from here loaded with farm workers and people my compadre, one of them, uh, and Hugo Morales, and Candido, all of us, uh, uh, the Vera family, and the uh, Nietos, uh, everybody. I mean, they, we, were, we were, we we went and we marched with Caesar. The old, the old guard. Yeah, we were there. We were, yeah, the old timers. The old timers were made out of uh, some good stuff. Nobody's paying any attention. Before you know it, it's like we're going to have a, a first of May march. I think that young leader from Santa Rosa Junior College, this kid Guzman, is calling it right. There's going to be ten, twelve thousand people there, because we are, are now our numbers just defy uh, <laughs> defy not being able to be seen. Yeah. You know, you just can't say those people way over there. Those people way over there are right here now, standing right next to us, and uh, I'm one of those people. Exclusion of us is going to work to the detriment, not only of us, it's, which is doing right now, but to all of us. Eventually, it catch up. That sort of things is like falling off a hundred-story building. You're halfway down, you haven't hit the ground yet, but you're about to. Yeah. And that's, that's what's happening. Communities that are plain dumb about what they are. We're two communities right now. There's a Latino community, and then there's the Anglo community, for lack of a better way of de defining it. But, uh, and, and we are two different and distinct communities, and we need not be. We could be one community.